It started early this morning. The Russian assault on Ukraine began with missile attacks on key targets. But across the country, Ukrainians woke to explosions lighting up the dawn sky. For my 60 years, this is the darkest moment in European history. Where this really goes back to is in the winter from 2013 to 14. The president then, Viktor Yanukovych, very close to Putin, had got elected with promise that Ukraine would become more modernized, would move towards the EU. And then at the last moment, in 2013, he changed his mind. Most of the Ukrainian citizens did not want this. And all these students and young people who want to be part of different set of values, not of kleptocracy, but of modernity in the EU, started camping out and protesting. We want uh, Ukraine to be integrated in the European Union, to uh, make our um, live standards better. Before long, however, the riot police turned up. Doctors, lawyers, civil servants all turned up to support this revolution in the middle of the Maidan Square in Kiev. Unarmed protesters gunned down in the streets by the riot police who were retreating from Kiev's Maidan Square. It got so bad by the end, the security forces opened fire with snipers on the roof and a hundred protesters were killed. This was, and I saw and I met the people, this was a revolution of the people against kleptocracy and authoritarian might. But Vladimir Putin did not like this. Ukraine, he saw as an extension of Russia. What did he do? He invaded Crimea. Then, at gunpoint, the deputies of the Crimea voted to secede. But that wasn't enough. In the east, closest to Russia, he invaded. He set up these fake statelets run by gangsters who have imprisoned, murdered and tortured many Ukrainians. And then secretly in 2014 invaded. Two million people fled in that initial invasion. Over 14,000 people have been killed. Among them, over 250 Europeans were flying an MH17, a Malaysian Airways jet, which was shot down by a Russian ground-to-air missile. 298 people were on board Flight 17. They were from at least nine countries, and as we mentioned, three of them were infants. Since Putin failed in 2014, he's never forgotten. He was surprised at the resistance of the Ukrainian people. He hoped to partition the country in the northeast from Kharkiv right down to Odessa on the Black Sea coast, but the Ukrainians wouldn't let him. And so what did he do in the meantime? Well, he intervened to get elected someone who didn't like NATO, who didn't think that America should intervene anywhere in the world anymore, a certain person called Donald Trump. He also intervened to promote the breakup of the EU, his biggest enemy. Remember, the Maidan demonstrators had lost their lives and taken to the streets in the freezing cold to be closer to the EU, to those kind of values of a free society, a free press, proper consumer choice, and the rule of law rather than kleptocracy. So one of the best ways he could undermine the EU was to approach politicians and back British politicians who were for Brexit. He funded right-wing parties, anti-EU parties, across Europe, from Germany, Italy, France, and the Netherlands. But he failed to get Donald Trump re-elected he failed to break up the EU, even despite Brexit, and so he's got one choice left now. Invasion. The fight in Ukraine, it's a fight against oligarchy, authoritarianism, and a whole raft of misogyny, homophobia, and racism you can hear spouting for every pro-Putin outlet. The fight in Ukraine is our fight.